Right, as you can see, the Malaga save is going extremely well. We are top of the league with nine games to go. Seven points clear. There is absolutely no way we're going to bottle it. We'll find out probably on Saturday night because I will be live streaming this on Saturday night to finish season one right on the YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. But I thought I need to start planning ahead of season two. I want to do things realistically. I need to start building my scouting network. Right, first thing off the bat, our team, current team members. Now, our recruitment team is okay. This is Laron, who has, it looks like a couple of nice stats. Good at negotiating, judging staff ability, but I am going to be appointing all the staff. Judging player ability and player potential, not great. We also want a name a little bit. I think we need a name in there. Chief Scout, Capote, I'm not going to sack him. He has got a couple of years left on his deal, I believe, yeah. So we'll we'll let that go for now. S Sebastian Moreno has got 15 and 13, so for third level and for second level. Remember, we're planning ahead for the second level, the second tier of Spanish football. And yeah, he's okay. We're not going to sack any scout right now because we do have space for four more scouts. So the first thing is getting the right scouts in. Now, before you do that, and before I do that, I start to assess where do we need our scouts from. Our scouting coverage as well at the moment isn't great. They're all Spanish, which doesn't necessarily mean that they only have knowledge of Spain. But in our, but in our case, all three scouts just have extensive knowledge of Spain and nowhere else. Which at the moment is absolutely fine because as you can see, our scouting range is just Spain. Now, we're in the third tier, so diving into Europe would maybe be a little bit too much. However, as you can see, we have been boosted by a lot of money. The sale, the sale of Ricardo Horta to Newcastle for a total of £25.5 million. We received 15% of that, which in all with another sort of like solidarity payment ended up being about £4 million, which is pretty good. That has definitely seen our finances improve with the overall bank bank balance and a nice little transfer budget. Now, I'm not planning on spending that like you would normally do in the transfer budget. I'm actually going to be moving it over into this here. And we're really going to focus. Remember, I wanted it to be we're building this club up to be a super club in terms of player recruitment, scouting network and the lot. So any spare money we get during this save, I'm not just going to buy the latest wonder kid and go and search in Brazil because we can't do that. I need to get my scouts and my scouting network a lot bigger. So then we have the potential to scout in these areas. Now, at the moment, world is a big package. And I'm debating whether or not to go on world just yet. I might bring in a couple of scouts ready for that next level, but I think the next level is we're going to be quite broad and we're going to miss out Western Europe and we're actually going to go and cover and scout players in Europe. Now, I'm hoping that this will then carry on to the... This will definitely carry on to the end of the season and I'm hoping beyond that we'll be able to maintain it with our budget and we may just have to move a few pennies around. But fingers crossed, going forward, especially if we're in the second tier as well, we may be able to scout Europe. 240k a season... Fingers crossed. I'd rather spend it on that than bringing a player in for 250 grand. So it gives you this little option. It says the cost of scouting range tells you increasing our scouting range will mean you will see more players in our advanced player search, increasing your opportunity to scout players. Now, we're not going into the advanced player search unless we look at the transfer list and the free play, free transfer players. Um, we're not just diving in and looking at a long list and clicking through players and searching by attribute. What we're going to do is set up recruitment focuses, see what's coming through for agents, scout them and then get them up in the scout and then go through the attributes based on a couple of key attributes, which we'll look at a later date, in particular for that Trequatista. Right, so we've got Europe set up. Boom. We now need to bring in four scouts. I'm also going to bring in a new head of youth development, which kind of all links in a little bit with youth team and stuff like that, and also a director of football as well. All right, now this is the world knowledge. It says world knowledge average, three scouts are out on a science. We're going to change all that as we sort of like look into the recruitment focuses. But basically, at the moment, despite only our coaches, despite only our scouts having a good knowledge of extensive knowledge of Spain, we actually have a few places around the world, in particular South America, uh, UK and Ireland is good, and Western Europe, very good, which is obviously around France and Spain and Portugal. We've got average in North, above average in North Africa, Central America and South Europe. Now, there is a couple of places that I would like to venture into. Obviously, South America, obviously North Africa as well, because it is so close 
to the Costa del Sol, which is just kind of around here. And then right here, what you can actually do is click nations and it also gives you a nice little list of the individual countries and what the knowledge is of those countries. Now I'm very keen to build up a broad knowledge of Europe, also Scandinavia, which I've found really tough to actually get some Scandinavian scouts into. We might just have to leave that for now, but let's see what we can set up. Remember in the third tier, we're gonna be going into the second tier. It's not gonna be amazing, but I think we need to get something that's gonna set us up ready for scouting across Europe next season. Okay, now our world knowledge has slightly changed. I have brought in four new scouts and our knowledge area of a few countries. Look, our list is getting bigger and bigger. There's a couple of reasons for that. Now, I've unfortunately not been able to find a scout for Scandinavia, which was a shame. Now, when you are doing that, and you want to find a, a staff member, especially a scout from a certain area, what you need to do is obviously when you go into your edit search, go on recruitment team, just press scout, and then what you need to do is edit search, drop down to scouting, world knowledge, and then just pick a nation. So we had a couple of these in here that had a decent knowledge of Denmark, and they just weren't very good. Like the best is 11 and 11, Mario Mikel. So I've decided to leave it for now and something that we can work on and progress. We don't have to do everything right now. We can focus in other areas to start with. Now I've brought in four more scouts. We've got full scouts, a new direct football. We may bring in a technical director. I might start divvying out a couple of roles into rounds, helping out sort of like supporting the B team and stuff like that. So we may get one of them in because we can. We might just even get a club legend in just for the sake of it. Recruitment analyst as well. We will look at appointing two of them in the next couple of weeks. But let's go and meet the scouts that I've picked up to really bolster our scouting coverage. Four new scouts, couple that you will recognise, uh, two ex-footballers. This one is one that's been mentioned by uh, Stinger. He has it in his save with his lower league Portuguese side, Salgueros, I think they're called. Not absolutely amazing, 11 and 11, so a little bit average, but it does give us a little footstep into some countries, including Denmark, knowledge very good, Norway, very good. And Sweden, Sweden, geez, Sweden, very good. There's also some African countries as well, Nigeria, uh, Guinea, Congo, extensive. So there's a few nice little nations in there. He also has a really low wage of only £230 a week. So I thought a really nice little pickup and we can get him going in some of those obscure areas. Might just send him into Scandinavia and see what he can pick up for me. We've also brought in Dimitris Barbielis and we've brought him in 14 judging ability, 15 player potential. Now I kind of think that's top level, top tier, not elite clubs, no massive, massive clubs, but I think if you're in, you know, one of the top five divisions in and around Europe and your scouts are 14, 15, you'll be happy with that. And for us, we're in league, we're in the third division at the moment, going into the second, so we're well set up. We're building that foundation ahead of its time, really, and we're going to really focus on having this nailed by the time we get into that top division. As you can see, now we've picked him up because he does have good knowledge in some random ones. Greece, Cyprus, France, Portugal, Spain and Serbia. Also a little bit of knowledge in Brazil and Argentina as well. We know what type of players we can pick up there. And with my love of Italy, it would be nice to get some Italian players in our scouting network as well. We've brought in Mario Stanic. Not great. 10 and 9. But the reason why I've done this, because he has all these countries here where you can potentially get some wonder kids in particular I'm looking at Croatia. He has an extensive knowledge of Croatia. Mario Stanic is the ex-Chelsea player, right? I'm sure he's the ex-Chelsea player. Yeah. I'm sure at one point he scored an absolute thunderbolt as well for Chelsea before he then retired and became a scout. Now, his nation is extensive in Bosnia and Croatia, so absolutely vile. Kosovo as well, because you get the odd one. The odd one in Slovenia, the odd one in Macedonia. Is it Macedonia, that one? North Macedonia, yes, and obviously Montenegro and Albania. So there you go. That's why we've got him in. Once again, £220 a week. So once we get into that top league... If I think that we need to kick on again, I'm quite happy to let a few of these go. It won't cost us an arm and a leg. I said we're aiming to get out into the top tier by the start of season four. So we're going to give ourselves two seasons in the second tier ahead of getting that promotion to La Liga. And then the last one is Flavio Roca. He is a South American scout. Argentinian, judging player potential 17. Adaptability, 15. Level of discipline, obviously it's not important, but it's always good to have that. Uh, a judging player ability, 14. Nation knowledge, extensive in Argentinian, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay and Colombia. So not Brazil, but you do get those wonder kids in particular from Colombia and Uruguay. So when we do go on the world stage, 
he will be very good at scouting in those areas for us. Up until that point, I might just get him scouting some away, some away teams and opposition, getting me some opposition reports. But you never know. We're depending on how finances work, next season we, may, we might extend our scouting range from Europe to world. Only an extra 10k, but I said I'm just trying to do it a little bit in stepping stones as we go. Now, those are the scouts. Now, obviously, we've got the best scouts in the division. I am expecting us to probably have the best scouts in La Liga 2 next season. Analyzing data, we're only second, but we do have the opportunity to get some recruitment analysts in. So, as I said, I will definitely do that off camera. There is cats fighting outside. That's why I had that funny face. Um, so, we sacked Laurent, our head, uh, head of youth development and... Director of Football, and we have brought in Julian Ward. He's the Director of Football, formerly at Liverpool. Absolute bargain, £1,200 a week. We gave him a massive contract as well, massive length in terms of contract. He is a elite Director of Football, and because of probably Malaga's status still in world football and the fact that I'm here and we're going to make things happen, he's decided to join me on the Costa del Sol. Really good at negotiating. I am going to give him a little bit of power in and around the B team and the under-19. So very important that he has a good negotiating and judging the ability of players as well, depending on then making a decision on some players in terms of offering new contracts, letting them go, selling, etc. So there is Julian Ward. He has been joined by Alex Garcia, once again, and a phenomenal level of youth team coach at this level. 20 working with youngsters, judging player ability, 15, judging player potential, 16. Absolutely tremendous at this level. And what also caught the eye, you know, I don't just want to do it on attributes all the time. No, we've taken Julian Ward because he's been at Liverpool. We're taking Alex Garcia because if you look at his entire career, Las Palmas, assistant manager for just over, just short of what, a year, just over a year actually, Barcelona chief scout, Barcelona performance analyst, Barcelona scout, Barcelona performance analyst, Barcelona scout. He's been a manager as well, under 19s manager, youth coach. He has been at Barcelona for a long time. And for him then to come and join us as a head of youth development, I think is a sensational appointment for us and will definitely help us moving forward. Probably going to get him to do some of the youth team sort of like training plans and stuff like that, maybe a bit of individual work in the B team as well, so I'm not doing it all myself. All right, that is our backroom staff. Now, recruitment focus. I'm just going to set one up. As you can see, Teo, who we had on loan, is about to sign for us. He is potentially going to be our Trequatista next season, so we might not need to sign and have a recruitment focus set up for the Trequatista. However, it's going to be a long-term plan. He may not reach the levels we want. He may even reject us, so we are going to set up a GQ recruitment focus right now for the Trequatista. Right, recruitment focuses, if you've not set any up yourselves, they will set them up for you. So as you can see, they normally go around, obviously, your scouting range. So they've got Liga Hyper Notion, which is the league above us, the sort of like the second tier. It's got the Primera Federation, is what we're in the third tier. It's also scouting the Segunda Federation, which is the leagues below. And it's also scouting Spain as one big recruitment focus. So as you can see, it's literally just Spain, you know, ongoing, which is what I like to do. I like to keep scouts just constantly doing the same job, generally. And that's what we'll be setting up with the Trequatista. But just as you can see, minimum potential is two and a half star, which does then mean you get a lot of scout recommendations. So what I am actually going to do is I'm going to knock all of these off and we're going to start a blank canvas. I'm just going to show you one today of how we're going to do it. And then over time, I will show you how we're then going to develop into other countries. But basically, recruitment focus... We're going to create a new recruitment focus as well. Also, your completed ones do line up there. So all them ones that I've just deleted, we can go back in and see what we've got to work with. All right. And then active, obviously none. So let's start one, create recruitment focus. We've got our Malaga 2 tactic here. You can do any position from the tactic. So if you're just wanting to maybe scout an area. So when I go and maybe scout Brazil or South America, we will probably put in any position from tactic because remember our recruitment is going to be absolutely fixed around this tactic. And then from that, it will give us a broad range of players. As our scouting network improves, we'll have certain scouts in certain areas just scouting everybody. And then we'll have scouts going out looking for certain positions as well. That is the grand plan. But at the moment, we're just going to be a little bit more. Obviously, at the moment, we've only got six. So we're just going to focus on that Trequatista. So we're going to click on the position, AMC, players suited to 
Trequatista. Now, what we are going to do is you've got the option of playing decent, good, and very good. Now, the Trequatista is a interesting role. A lot of players do not like to have it or feel comfortable doing it in terms of their star rating. So I'm just going to put decent. Moving across here, you obviously give it a name. I'm just going to call it Trek. We just want transfer, not transfer and loan. So I do want all these recruitment focuses to be focused on transfers and then we'll sort of like look in the player search ourselves in terms of the loan lists at the start of the season. I do also want to avoid as many loans as possible. Minimum current ability, I'm just going to keep it at one and a half star. The main reason for that is because there may be some youth team players that are really not ready, but have outstanding potential. So we're going to put it down quite low. Let's put it to one star, but this one's the important one, minimum potential ability. So what's the lowest rating we want them to be? And we're going to put that right up to three and a half star. Any age, because I am looking at that Trequatista, you know, we've said we might try and plan ahead, but you also want that older player in it. It's a Trequatista role and don't have to do much defensively. We've been talking Ravel Morrison, Deli Ali, and older Isco. Santi Cazola is also going to be a free transfer potentially at the end of the season. So, you know, our options for the Trek are absolutely wide. Now, what we are going to do is we obviously need to scout the area that we want to scout in, choose the area. Now, we are scouting Europe. So we could literally scout some certain areas. We can scout competitions. We can scout nations, individual nations, regions. But just for now, just to keep it nice and simple, we're just going to go nation, Europe, and Spain. So we're going to scout Spain for this. We're going to head into further details. Here you could add as many things as you want. I'm wanting to keep it quite broad just for now, just to see what comes up. So I'm going to leave it up to my scouts just to be as broad as possible. Just look at players of that potential ability and length. But I think what we'll do is we'll let it go blank. We'll let our scouts come back with maybe a broad range and then we're going to narrow it down based on player attributes, I think, and a couple of key attributes I want to see from a Trequatista. Head over back to main details. Now here, priority. Top priority is when you want something now. So you might decide to quickly sell a player later on in the transfer window. Maybe your star players had a release clause done uh, or you want it to make a last ditch sign and maybe a potential long-term injury. So that's when you would go on top and you will get your scouts to come back quicker with results. Now, this is a long process. This tactic is staying in. In particular, the Trequatista is staying in because we're keeping that Trequatista for the duration of the save. We always have a Trequatista. So we're going to click on go in. And then assign scout. In here, it gives you a nice little world knowledge as well. So it helps you decide which scouts you're going to scout. If that is ticked, it will automatically assign scouts. Current focus as well. So it tells you how busy they are. But what we're going to do is untick that. And then we're going to click Sebastian Moreno just for now. We're just going to go on one because I'm going to set the other scouts off in other places. Also, you've got the option of signing analysis to it as well. We've only got one, which is obviously Nath Kirby. That's where we obviously probably get our extended knowledge, world knowledge as well, because our analyst is very good. World knowledge of England, Belgium, Turkey and Spain. He didn't have anything in Spain. So it just shows you how well he's above average. Look, he's old. he was on zero Spain. And then three quarters of the way through the season, it's up to above average. So you'd expect by the end of the season, he's going to have a good level of knowledge in the country he is working in. So I'm going to leave that. I normally leave that to the uh, analysts automatically to do it in the game. Include results found in the recruitment focuses. Now I'm going to leave that on because we've got a couple of areas where players potentially can do roles in a number of positions, including DM, AML and AMC. There are potential that players could play in two out of the three of those positions. So I'm going to leave that on so I can get players from other recruitment focuses coming into the right shortlist. Press confirm and there we go. And straight away they've come back with players that they've already got in other recruitment focuses. All right, so there's a list there. So let's have a look at Juan Artola. Now, he is on loan from Athletic Club Bilbao, which might be a little bit of a sticking point, but he is 23 years old. So he's, you would say, his days at probably Athletic Club are probably over. And as you can see, Trequatista, not bad. So what we will do is we're going to start adding some to our shortlist. So I'm just going to add him to our shortlist. Ones that I like the look of. So we'll just add him in there. And then as you can see, what we'll then do is head to our shortlist and we've got a nice list of players that are growing now in here. As you can see, there is this call there, not for sale, Pedro Leon, because he is still kicking around. Some of you might know him, had a decent career, kind of made it big at Real Madrid and then never really, and then after that never really kicked on. And then from that, what we'll do over time is I'll put some filters together which are all attribute based. So at the moment, like this is an attacking one, but what I'm going to do is really narrow it down in terms of positions. So we'll be looking at, in particular, maybe four or five key attributes for the Trequatista role and see which one comes out on top. That's going to be our plan 
going forward. All right, guys, it's a big one today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've kind of showed you like how I set it up and how I like to do it. It has an element of realism to it as well. We're not diving into the play search and just typing in plus 15 heading, plus 15 finishing and see what comes up and sign the best one. We're letting our scouts do the work first, put them into our database and then we're going to look at the attributes and look at key attributes for every single position. That is going to be a standalone video on its own where I'm going to have custom filters for every single position in my tactic because remember we're keeping to this tactic for as long as possible in particular the formation and the trek with easter roll and all the other rolls as well hopefully we'll stay as long as possible all right so that really means that we can really focus on long-term and short-term recruitment because we've got our scouts looking for particular players to fit a particular style